Hello everybody, welcome to InventBox. This is Darius, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use a section view so that you can see the internal features of a part that would otherwise be obscured from vision. Let's get started. First, let's create a sphere and then a second sphere. I'll make the second sphere a little bit smaller because I'll be cutting it out of the first. Select the larger sphere and then hit control and grab the second smaller sphere and then make a cut of the two shapes. Initially it looks the same, but if we use a little trick of changing the transparency, we now see that we have a hollow orb, a hollow sphere. Let's create a drawing of this part so that we can dimension both the uh, outer and inner diameters. So jump to the Tech Draw Workbench, load up a new page, and then uh, select the cut object and just create a standard view. Let's make it a little bit bigger. I will change the page scale to 5. That's a little bit better. Now with the main view selected, choose the section view button. As you can see, it's sliced apart in half, but we're not looking at it from the right angle. Now we can easily fix this by clicking any one of these four buttons. And the reason is because it's a sphere, uh, it looks the same from any angle you look at it. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. Well, you can see that we have accomplished our goal because I can now select the inner diameter and dimension it. Very neat. Now that we have a basic example of section view under our belts, let's apply what we learned to recreate this section view in this drawing that I made. Now the first decision that we have to make is what will we choose as our base view? Because remember that the section view wizard gives us four options. We can either divide the part horizontally, looking up and looking down, or divide the part vertically, looking towards the left or towards the right. But if we chose to look at the front of this part, which is rotationally symmetric, then dividing the part horizontally and dividing the part vertically would produce section views that look the same. So let's look at the part from the right. That way, when we divide the part horizontally and look up and down, we will get views that look like this first one. And if we divide the part vertically, looking towards the left and towards the right, we will get views that look circular, like this one here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create this drawing and insert a base view looking at the part from the right. And we'll up the scale a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Next, I will show you what all four of the section view options look like. Now, except for this first one, which seems a little bit arbitrary to, um, to me since the so let's just jump to uh, looking up and let's see what looking down looks like and this is looking towards the left and looking towards the right okay well since the first view we want is like this uh, we can either choose looking up or looking down uh, notice you have to click the reset button in order to switch between views. All right, so I'm happy with that. However, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, except I'll actually rotate it negative 90 degrees so that it matches with the base view. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what happens when you have two section views. Uh, at least in this version of FreeCAD. So let's click on the base view and we'll look at one of the other uh, left and right projections. So let's just look at this one. We divided the part vertically and we're looking right. Now maybe you can already see what's going on here that's a little bit strange. So we have two section views that are labeled A. Now, I don't know if you saw, but you can actually change that in the wizard, I could have chosen to call it 
with a symbol B. Um, and I, oh, I forgot to choose a, I forgot to choose which one I wanted. All right. So there's that method. And then we can also change the label or change the symbol after the fact by coming to the one that says section symbol. So I could change this to C or D or something. But uh, notice that that doesn't update on the base view. It will. You just have to close out of the page and open it again. And I should also warn you that there's a the property called label, which is different than choosing the symbol. Okay, uh, now uh, I'll show you how to change the location of this plane. It didn't matter so much for the first section. We got what we wanted, but see where we are on section D. Let's move this uh, plane forward a little bit to the thinner section. And I think it'll be easiest just to start over. So here's... Uh, this will be section B, since it's the second one. We'll be looking left. And we want to position this plane at a certain position along the axis of revolution, which in my case is the y-axis, um, as you can see here. Y-axis was uh, chosen as the axis of revolution. And uh, since the right side of the part was 0, I, I'm in the negative quadrant. So let's go to negative 22 millimeters, and that puts us in the smaller section here. So yeah, you can use that method to move the location of the plane. And that property can be changed after the fact by the uh, section, it says section origin plane, here it is, minus 22, uh, changing the x and y will not do anything in this case because the plane extends to infinity in the x, z directions, um, but we can see it update when we change it in the y, so that's pretty cool. And there's one last thing I want to show you guys, and that is whenever you go to print this drawing, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I showed you this before, but you can turn off the dashed line frames and also the dots, the vertices. Um, and this will happen automatically whenever you go to print it. Um, but you can see we also lost our section labels which are very important so that we don't get these mixed up. So um, we can fix this by using the caption property on the section view. And here it is. So I'll just call it section B. Um, and we can do the same on section A. And now whenever we turn off the frames, when we go to print it, the uh, we still have a way to identify where our, um, you know, which section view is which. And I guess I should probably show you the uh, exporting it as a PDF, which you could export as a DXF, or I'll, maybe I'll talk about export options in another video. So that sounds good. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you are able to uh, clearly see how to use the section view. Um, and again, in summary, I recommend that if you're drawing a rotationally symmetric plane, look at it from an angle that will be able to give you the most information and not from an angle that's already rotationally symmetric. See you in the next video.